So, uh, again, my name is Marek Rosa, and I am the chief of uh, King Software House. We are a video game, uh, independent game development company based in Prague. And uh, we have had uh, two titles, two bigger titles currently. One is Space Engineers, which has sold uh, over 1.5 million copies uh, in last 1.5 year. Uh, the game is uh, just only two years in development. And then there is the second title called Medieval Engineers, which is uh, much, much, much uh, younger, only maybe like five, year, five months in, uh, on early access and a couple more months, more months in uh, development and has sold something like 150,000 copies or something like that. And uh, then we also have a third project, which is completely unrelated to video games. And uh, it's about general AI, general artificial intelligence. And uh, we started this project uh, about one and a half year ago. And uh, the idea is to develop some kind of artificial brains that can be integrated into any kind of body or agent and operate in any kind of environment, learn, adapt, and achieve some goals and generate some behavior. Uh, so, uh, to give you a better picture of our games, I will ask uh, to show you uh, videos. So, this is an announcement video for Medieval Engineers that we showed when we were announcing Medieval Engineers about half a year ag uh, ago.
thank you. And now the second video. Thank you, and now please the third video. Uh, this video demonstrates the deformable and destructible engine that we have in our game, so we can see all kind of crashes and collisions. Uh, thank you. Uh, for both uh, our engineering games, we are using and developing our own uh, in-game engine. We call it Virage, and the main premise of uh, the engine and also our games is uh, volumetricity of the environment and also the realistic physics, realistic graphics. And uh, by volumetricity, I mean that we don't. The entire ed environment is kind of realistic, or like there is. No, there are no empty or fake objects. Like everything has some volume, some some place, some mass, some weight, and uh, some properties. Uh, we decided to develop uh, at least two engineering games right now because uh, for us this engineering uh, gaming or engineering um, genre is some kind of franchise, and we'd like to use this. Uh, this kind of genre uh, for more games because the, this area is really uh, can be used also in other uh, other uh, time periods. And uh, by developing two games at the same time, or the the reason why we decided to develop also medieval while we are, we have been developing a space was that we wanted to reuse the features in medieval that we already implemented in, uh, in Space Engineers. And basically, in our opinion, it's just like one game uh, split into two products, because uh, there are many features that we develop for space and they go to medieval, and many features that go to uh, we develop for medieval and they go to, uh, to space. 
Uh, this picture shows uh, just a quick uh, snapshot of sales of space engineers uh, a year ago, and uh, it shows some spikes. Uh, there you can see that uh, the bigger, like most of the time there are no spikes, it's just constant sales, and then suddenly when we add some major feature, uh, the sales uh, increases, but actually it was just two times if we ignore steam sales. One was when we added a survival element, and the other was when we added a multiplayer. All other weeks, basically, uh, when we are adding new features, it doesn't change the sales. Uh, at the beginning of the development of space engineers and also medieval engineers, we decided that we will be doing only viral marketing. We didn't want to do some paid campaigns or something like that. We tried that, but it didn't really work for our kind of game, so we stay at viral marketing. And uh, our games have a viral marketing uh, like inside or like it's their nature. And if you think about this, uh, in, our, uh, in our games, people build some stuff and they feel tendency or urge to share it with their friends. So they either put it on Steam Workshop or YouTube, or YouTubers do the same thing and they want to show it. And basically this serves as a marketing uh, or gathering of awareness for our game. So we don't need to do the marketing. And we, we focus only for some kind of public relations, which basically means uh, we are communicating to our community what we are doing, uh, why we are not doing something, when we will do something, and so on. So, uh, we are focusing only on viral and public relations, but not paid campaigns. Uh, um, both games are developed uh, simultaneously, which means that we need to have a development schedule that's, uh, that um, can sus sustain this kind of development, this fast uh, development. Sometimes it's hard, because obviously you cannot, uh, or it's impossible to develop uh, features in just a couple of days, so you can release them every week. So basically we have parallel schedules, so there are multiple features being developed in parallel, and uh, when we feel that this feature is ready to be released, then we uh, move it to that week uh, release, we test it, and then we just go and go and go. And uh, we, uh, I mean, sometimes it's challenging, like for example right now we really have uh, challenging times in the in, internally in the development, but overall, we decided for this, uh, this path because it's some kind of pressure that's uh, pushing us to develop not just fast, but also prioritize things according to their importance for us or maybe development uh, dependencies or what our community wants or what we want with the game. And uh, we want this public uh, pressure because if we were developing both games uh, just by clo uh, behind closed doors, then there wouldn't be this pressure and maybe the team would uh, fall in some kind of uh, uh, less pressure development or like uh, maybe we would start doing uh, features that are not really important and, uh, and uh, then the entire uh, speed of the development would decline. Uh, sometimes there are uh, interesting moments when we see that we have some kind of roadmap uh, in our head, internal roadmap, and uh, the features that the community is uh, expecting is different. And uh, it's always important to uh, try to explain these differences uh, to the community so they understand why we are not doing the, we the, the features in a direction or in order they are expecting from us. And uh, at the same time, this kind of pressure is good because sometimes the community has a good uh, idea what is important for them and what should be added. And as I said, like this pressure helps us to stay focused on what's really important and not just things that are nice to have. Uh, when we are deciding for features that we want to implement, we usually look on uh, uh, on. Uh, how important that feature is in a short term or long term, uh, how it's uh, requested by the community, uh, if there are no uh, development dependencies. Some, for example, sometimes uh, when you want to develop some feature, it usually makes sense only after you develop three other features. So you should start with those three features and only then go to the fourth feature. And uh, when we are uh, deciding for, or when we are setting the development plan, 
we always look on the deadlines. So the idea is that we say, like, okay, we are doing, going to develop this and this feature, and we say that uh, we can estimate that we will be able to do it in, for example, one month. So we'll say, like, uh, okay, let's develop it in one month, and then we start by implementing the most important parts of that feature first. And as we go closer and closer to the deadline, we see that, okay, is there still uh, some time left to make this feature perfect or add some more things around it, or uh, if uh, we just we sh should start polishing and basically finishing that feature. And the reason for this is that uh, usually it's not possible to estimate uh, time requirement for each feature, each task, or it's like uh, you don't even need to do this because things change and usually say that uh, at the beginning or at the end of the task, you are much smarter about the task than as you have been at the beginning of the task. So it doesn't make sense to make this, this kind of predictions. And since we start with the, more imp with the most important things, then as the deadline is closing, and we, if we have to uh, choose features or parts of the feature that needs to be dropped, we usually drop the less important features because the more important features are already finished from the beginning of the task. And we also, yeah, we also try to look on uh, features that have some kind of uh, high return on investment, but this is not just from finance point of view, it's also from like player point of view. Because sometimes you can have some feature that's uh, really easy for us to add, it can uh, be just a couple of days of work, but it's something that will make many people happy and they will play the game because of that feature. On the other side, sometimes there can be features that will take months and months of work and nobody will care. So we, I mean, this is um, based on experience, but uh, this is what we are at least trying to do, like start or try to do things that are really important and leave the less important things for the future. So maybe if there is no time, we will never do them, but it's okay because we already did the important things. Uh, some experiences from the business point of view. Uh, we see game industry as some kind of lottery, which means that the environment, the business environment is changing, even the environment on Steam is changing. There are things on Steam that change just suddenly and it can impact your sales, your audience, or the amount of people who will be aware of your game. Uh, sometimes, uh, for example, like what we are seeing is that uh, the number of games released every day, every week on Steam is increasing. So the situation right now is much harder than it was a year ago. And this is our experience and we are assuming that in a year or two or three, the situation will be even more unpredictable. So we don't know what will be in a year or two. So for this reason, we usually try to be as fast as possible and not uh, not do things like, okay, let's release this game in two years, because in our opinion, two years is like too much in, in the future, and we don't know how the situation on a PC market or Steam will look like in two years. Like, I have no idea. So for us, it's safer to do things uh, while we can do them, you know, because two years is just uh, far, far in the future. And uh, also another experience uh, from the business is that uh, uh, we prefer like done features more than perfect features. And by this I mean that we try to uh, deliver some, some feature. Uh, I don't want to say that we want to deliver it in a bad quality or some non-working thing. We usually try to do our best. But uh, if, we, if somebody has a tendency like, okay, let's make it perfect and more perfect and more perfect, perfect we usually stop this and rather uh, ship it out so we can get uh, feedback from the community. And basically this feedback is more valuable than our internal opinions and ideas and discussions and things like that. And this means that uh, we are trying to iterate as fast as possible. Uh, so community, uh, community is important part, especially since we have a viral game. Uh, community is useful for getting either positive or negative feedback. Positive is good because it boosts the morale. Uh, negative can uh, demoralize people in our team, of course, but it can also serve as some kind of compass 
that's, that's telling us uh, what is important, what is less important. And it helps us to decide what features we should be focusing on. It, it doesn't mean that we are doing exactly what people ask us on forums and other places. It only serves as some kind of compass. And uh, uh, we try to, to be open with the community and communicate uh, as much as possible. But at the same time, we prefer to not reveal our future plans. And uh, actually, at the beginning of Space Engineers, we were really uh, strictly following this rule. Like, we just released the game, and we didn't say where it will go in a month, in two years, and so on. So we just keep our mouths quiet. And we changed this thing a couple of months ago. We announced a few bigger things, like new multiplier code, uh, planets, and some other things. And uh, we are kind of regretting this right now, because uh, while we are still developing these things, people are already in impatient. So they, they really uh, are expecting us to release this thing like every Thursday or every Tuesday. And it's, like, it's making them crazy. And then it's making crazy our uh, people in our team who maybe cannot handle stress so good. So uh, after we finish Planets and all this thing, I don't think we'll be announcing any big things uh, anytime soon because it's better if when people don't know what we are working on than if they will be stressing us every week after week. Yeah, uh, the way we hire people uh, for our team, basically uh, what I think is that we have quite high standard for what we expect from our teammates. And for this, uh, we, when somebody uh, wants to join our team, uh, we test him as much as possible. Uh, we have some discussions with the person. We need to see if the, if the candidate is able to self-manage himself, if he's able to understand the priorities, and if, if he belongs like if he has a similar uh, culture to our team or if he can be flexible and adopt our uh, culture and then we uh, hire the person and uh, these are the important parameters of, of every candidate and basically it's because we need people who are independent and uh, who can deliver things uh, not only on time because it's just one thing, but uh, uh, more important is to actually understand the priorities and then manage your, yourself according to the priorities. Okay, uh, yeah, so that was the presentation. I'm actually surprised because I was assuming that there is more slides. Uh, so we can have Q&A right now. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, just raise your hand and I'll come to you. Anyone? What sort of tools do you use to track what's happening and manage? Like, Do you use something like Jira or some sort of ticketing tool or something else during development? So the question is, uh, how are we managing the different development tasks, right? OK. Yeah, we are using Asana for this. And there are these like, low-level task, like there is probably hundreds, maybe thousands of little tasks. And uh, for high level uh, project management, we have just simple, some kind of Excel table, you know, where you have each guy and you know, like w what he will be doing, like, not every, every week, but usually like these tasks, or I would say like more features week by week. And it's usually just a couple of weeks in the future. But since you ask, uh, right now, we need to redo this entire process because uh, like we are still le learning, and uh, when we are developing two games at the same moment, it's more challenging even on the leadership kind of thing. So deciding what features are more important than the other features. So what we are going to do in next weeks will be that we will uh, merge or put together all uh, features and ideas that we have for our games, like everything that's planned for the next two years. Uh, we'll prioritize all these things and uh, look on the dependencies and basically make a new, like, complete list of uh, roadmap. It will be internal. We don't want to publish this, but uh, we feel like right now it's a good time to have this because until now we're okay with having just a like, couple of months in the, into the future roadmap. 
and uh, we didn't want to go much further because it just wasn't important. But right now, since the games are kind of going to be finished, we need to have a like, clear idea how it will look from now till the end. Any other question? Uh, I noticed uh, quite a bit of your code on GitHub. Uh, does GitHub affect your development in any way? Or, I don't know, is this some kind of policy? Uh, do you do this often, or is it an independent initiative? Uh, can we repeat the first part? Mm, I noticed uh, a lot of your code on GitHub. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. A uh, couple of weeks, maybe two months ago, we released complete source code for space engineers. And uh, it's actually complete. There are a few things that are obfuscated, but basically they don't belong to us. It's some Havoc. Uh, Havoc is a physics engine of uh, wrapper things. And the, the idea behind this was that um, like we didn't see a reason why we shouldn't release this source code to the people. Like there is always a risk that somebody will pirate the game, and basically by giving them source code, it just making them easier. But uh, at the same time, we knew that there are already some virus versions of the game. So if there will be another one, it just doesn't matter. And uh, OK, so to, uh, to wrap this up, uh, we wanted to give people freedom to modify and play with the game as much as possible while not being the bottleneck for this freedom. Because right now, if somebody has a dream and wants to add some new feature to Space Engineers, we are the only people who can do this thing. And since there are so many ideas and we can do only so little, we will be bottleneck forever. And by giving this to people, uh, right now it's up to them. I mean, I know that not everybody will make his own uh, space engineers modifications, but at least we removed ourselves from this bottleneck equation. And uh, also we think that uh, from business point of view, uh, we are expecting, assuming, or kind of hoping that at some moment somebody will actually make some really nice modification, something uh, which happened with Daisy and Arma 2. Basically, this is what we are uh, hoping that uh, we just um, allowed this to happen. You know, it may not happen, something like Daisy and Space Engineers, but it may happen, and that's it. Uh, next one. Okay, I guess we're done. So thank you for your presentation, and if you'd like to try the games, so head over there and try them. <laughs> thank you very much.